When people talk about the mystery novel, Ted said, as I remember, they mention the Maltese Falcon and the Big Sleep. When they talk about the Western, they say there's the Way West and Shane. But when they talk about science fiction, they call it that Buck Rogers stuff, and they say that 90% of science fiction is crud. Well, they're right. 90% of science fiction is crud. But then 90% of everything is crud, and it's the 10% that isn't crud that is important. And the 10% of science fiction that isn't crud is as good as or better than anything being written anywhere. This is the full text of what science fiction writer Theodore Sturgeon would call his revelation. People would later just take out one sentence of it and call it Sturgeon's Law. But I think the full text is important when applying to media criticism. What I mean is that it's not really a good argument to say something is bad just because most of the examples are bad, because that applies to everything. It's a double standard just to say your thing is great while the other thing sucks based on that, because you're ignoring the thing that you like is mostly bad as well. For example, if you hear about a remake being made and you think it's going to suck because it's a remake, you're wrong. It's going to suck because it exists, because again, even non-remakes suck. Sequels are never as good as the original. Most of the originals suck as well. Most of the music my kids listen to is crap. Most of the music you listen to is crap as well. You just forgot about the bad ones. Also applies to people who complain about movies are bad these days. Most movies were bad in every era. Another licensed game? Most licensed games suck. Most non-licensed games suck. The Nintendo Wii's library is nothing but shovelware. Oh, piss off. Every successful video game has lots of shovelware. That's one of the consequences of being successful because those developers see where the money is. I also noticed that calling certain games shovelware on the Wii was given a very broad net that somehow wasn't applied to the other systems. Now, I don't think Sturgeon's Law should be taken as an absolute. As in, not everything is either crud or wonderful. That just makes for a false dichotomy about quality. Heck, the fresh or rotten dichotomy is my biggest problem with Rotten Tomatoes. That and people confuse the tomato rating with the Metacritic score, those are entirely different things. Then the site encourages people to not even read reviews, they just look at the number. It's more accurate to say that Sturgeon's Law applies to a bell curve. This means not only is the truly good stuff rare, but the truly bad stuff is rare. I mean utter dreck like Monster A Go Go, you know, that film that's barely watchable even on Mystery Science Theater 3000, and has the biggest argument for why it's averted my expectations should not be taken as an automatically good thing. But most of the stuff we think of as the worst is just highly flawed, like Batman and Robin or the Bayformers movies. But most of the movies are just average, either slightly below or slightly above, like the Under Siege films. And again, it's a small amount that's the really good stuff. Take The Last Starfighter, which isn't really considered one of the best movies ever, but still a very solid film. And then even smaller than the 10%, just maybe 2 or 3, are the real gems, like The Shawshank Redemption. Now, if you want to criticize a medium or genre or type of thing, there are plenty of legitimate ways to do it. It's just that using the worst examples is not one of them. You will get the worst examples of anything. So if you're going to say that so-called practical effects are so much better than CGI, your argument has a fatal flaw. Stuff like The Thing are the exceptions. More often than not, you're going to get something that's barely better than Mac and me. I've heard some people say, why don't people just make things better? Why does everything have to suck so much? Just do better. That's not how it works. Sturgeon's Law exists for many reasons. Yes, sometimes you could have people who don't try because they're just out to make money. Some could be con men. Some could be legitimate businesses, but they want so much content that they don't put on any quality filters. Anyone who's looked at Steam's free-for-all policies will know what I'm talking about. You could have your company run by those who just want to make money. They don't care if the work is good or if the customers like it. But caring about the art over money isn't that much better either, because that's another form of taking off the quality filters. 
Sometimes the people making it can be just plain inexperienced. Other times people could be experienced but set in their ways and not realize that they're doing something wrong or refuse to admit it. There can be too many cooks, too many yes men, or people could try working together but it just doesn't work. You could fail to plan things properly. And even if you avoid all of those, Murphy's Law still comes into play. So it's also an invalid argument to automatically assume that people just deliberately made something bad. There can be many factors. That's why it's important to look up things behind the scenes, not just assume you can tell what happened based on the final product. But another important thing about Sturgeon's Law is that it can be necessary. People just don't know things. That's not how our brains work. We often have to learn by trial and error. You ask many truly successful people, and they will tell you that their failures are often better teachers than their successes. And many times, something good won't happen until something bad happens first. For example, no matter what happened to the Alien franchise, we wouldn't have gotten Alien in the first place if the movie Darkstar had a halfway decent monster prop. Seriously, Dan O'Bannon said that he made Alien simply because he wanted a space movie with a decent monster. Now, as the nerd errant, the conclusion of this quest is, I want to give you peace of mind. If you take all these things into account, you realize that if something's going to suck, yes, it's more likely to happen than not, but if it sucks, it sucks. You can just move on. Over time, you will realize that the good stuff is what lasts. If you want to help this channel grow, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell either. Also, if you can, please donate to my Patreon, which should have exclusive content in the future. Until the next upload.